to the Kent Lab Podcast. You understand how I'm thinking about this and kind of how I'm looking at it. And still, when I hear numbers about total cases in America, I, there's part of me that's like, well, dang, we're all going to die. You know what I mean? Like, well, this thing's really getting bad. This thing's taken over because you're talking about total cases, total cases. To, we have another 60,000 cases in America, and that adds to the total. And here we are. It, you know, this is the total in the country, and there's so much emphasis put on that. It's like a subconscious thing that you, it's like it does work. Whatever messaging they're trying to convey is working. Cause even in my mind, I'm thinking, crap, this is like, this is just getting worse. Yeah. It's snowballing. Yeah. It's not getting better. You know, I mean, but, but then there's the stat on how many people have recovered and we're not paying enough attention to yeah, that. Yeah. But if you, if you have a doomsday, you know, ticker and you, it, it does bring about a certain amount of fear. When people are afraid, a significant portion of them can be better controlled, right? Yes. And so, you know, when you, when you are afraid, there's a sense of hopelessness that sets in, and you'll do whatever you're told to survive. Yes. Others will revolt to that, right? Now, a way to think about suicide is, um, you, you remember 9-11, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they were the jumpers. Um, they didn't classify the jumpers as suicide deaths, right? But a death by terrorism. But they took their own life, mm-hmm. right? Their act. But they didn't classify it as suicide. Um, and I think it's important because they didn't show up to work wanting to take their life. Mm-hmm. Um, they had no other way out. And so when people are caught up in such a fear narrative, um, and they see these numbers, and it leads them to such fear. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just inevitable. Everybody is going to die of this thing, is what they're thought. Like, oh, man, I hadn't thought of it like that. And so they're, they're, it creates this hopelessness. Yeah. And so suicide rates go up because much like the people in the buildings that jumped, they didn't want to die. They just didn't see another way out. Yes. And so they jump. And so here we are with this, this culture, and there's so, many, so much fear. That's why I think, man, for the sake of the people who don't have the emotional capacity to process 2020, let's talk about the recovered mm-hmm. number. Let's talk, let's share stories. Instead of the stories every night with Lester Holt about the, a victim that's young and healthy that's died, let's talk about so many old people yep. with pre existing conditions. Let's talk about their stories of survival. Yes. Let's, let's celebrate that. Let's not just focus on young, healthy dying, because all that is doing is creating fear for the young, healthy guy. Yes. That is hunkered down in his bunker, you know, living off a generator, afraid to breathe, and yep. hasn't been outside in seven months, um, and he's going to kill himself, right? Yep. It's like, let's offer this guy hope. Yes. But if you don't have hope, if, you, if it's only a matter of time, and that's the narrative you're being fed... Um, I can see why you could get to such a despairing place. Yeah. It's not that you want to die. You just don't see another way out. That's an interesting thought I hadn't thought of when you compare that to the to the jumpers at 9-11. I think that's a key point. And also, the government just tripped over themselves at places, too. When you look at what happened in New York City, you know, they thought they were needed to be the man and shut everything down, which, again, I don't really fault them for that. In mid-February, no one we knew what this know. was. I mean, yeah. we thought this, ever, yeah. you know, who knows what this is? So you're just doing what you can. But what got weird was then end of March into April when we started to actually know some things about it. And then you started to see the different mayors in different cities and the different governors kind of power tripping. And a good example of the government tripping over themselves is New York City. Who's the, who's the mayor? Oh, okay, Cumo. Andrew, Andrew the Blasio Cumo. is the mayor. Oh, okay, okay yeah. Blasio is the mayor. Cumo is the governor. governor. And Cumo, this is so hard to believe. And my, my family gets a little bit into the conspiracy sometimes. Sure, so when sure. this was hitting the family group thread in like spring, summer, I honestly didn't pay any attention to it. So this is like, this is bad on me because I thought it was maybe a conspiracy. But the thought or the... The fact was that Kumo was forcing nursing homes to take back in COVID patients. And I was like, there's no way. So I never paid any attention to it. Well, as it turns out, no, that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And like 11,000 older folks died because of this. So here we are shutting down the city, mandating lockdowns, shutdowns, everything like that. We're tripping over ourselves because we're also doing ridiculous things like saying nursing homes have to take back in these elderly patients that had COVID. Well, guess what? It spread like wildfire. Mm-hmm. 
And so many thousands die. I mean, the number that sticks in my mind was like 33,000 died in New York in a relatively short amount of time. But like a third of them were because of the nursing home debacle. It's so crazy, man. Yeah, it's, yeah I think it's closer to 40,000. Um, now I'm sure it died. is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's wild, man. Um, and so it doesn't take uh, much creativity to create a, a growing narrative of fear. Yeah. Uh, to, to control. Uh, but, but that, man, that comes at... And, and to to leverage politically. Right. And that just gets really scary. Yeah, it sure really it sure scary. does.